Welcome everyone. Welcome to this astrology report on the new moon in Cancer. I hope you are having a good one. I hope this finds you well. Uh, wow, lots to talk about here. And I'm going to make this maybe a little bit more brief than usual because as I've said before, I'm really feeling led to work on other projects that are taking more of my attention, namely the war on women that I did, the war on men that I did, and now working on the war on families. And how fitting during cancer season, I think. I don't know. I'm going to try to hammer at that. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about this astrology. And let me say that leading up to this full moon we've got you know mars and virgo on the tent so a lot of people are probably um putting a lot of effort into just the daily grind you know um the mundane aspects of life i mean and maybe even health for me i've been trying to get my my health in order you know uh, changing up my routines going to um, get some advice from healthcare people, getting on my supplements, getting back on my workout routine, all of that good stuff. So you might find yourself in a similar mindset coming into this new moon and also with Mercury and Leo, people being a lot more out there, you know, with their communications, just saying what they got to say, which is a beautiful thing. You know, I think that that's, you know, that's Aquarian mentality. <laughs> Just say it, you know? And I do like Mercury and Leo for that reason. They'll say it, you know? Um, confident communications. Yeah, hopefully it's boosting your confidence with what you're saying. Another dynamic that we're dealing with collectively is, you know, we're coming into increasingly retrograde energy, okay? Coming into this new moon, we've got Pluto and Capricorn retrograde, Saturn and Neptune retrograde in Pisces. So, People, although they might be kind of more flamboyant with the communications, you know, that's kind of a, that's going to pass, right? This may be like for a month, right? And then in the backdrop of it all, there's a lot of going, more going inward, especially as we get deeper into the year and these retrogrades continue to stack up. I think, you know, if you're one of those people that's like, yeah, I'm not a fan of all these loud mouths. <laughs> um, it's going to get more of an, an inner focus. I think uh, more restructuring of our lives is what we're having to re-examine, take a look at also our beliefs. And that's bringing about a lot of internal change for a lot of people. And then shortly afterwards, you know, um, after this new moon, we have even more retrograde energy coming. Oh, joy! With Venus in Leo going retrograde on the 22nd and also Chiron going retrograde on the 23rd. So... Um, you know, this is for some people maybe bringing in a return of lost loves or at least, you know, you're going back in your mind down memory lane and trying to reconcile these matters within oneself. Um, especially if it's having to do with loyalty issues. I have seen that coming up in the cards, by the way. Okay, loyalty issues and the astrology is really supporting it. And again, if you add into this into that, the layer of, you know, Chiron retrograde, where we're re-examining self-worth issues, um, especially the right to assert oneself um, and their own free will, basically free agency, okay? It, it's a lot of going inward, and it's a lot of slowing down, and it's a lot of internal processing, and, you know, it brings us to this point uh, this month where we've got five retrograde energies. Um, do you feel it? Do you feel things already starting to feel kind of like sludge or stuck or whatever? I recently talked to a client about this. Like, we feel like, eh, I already feel like it's waiting and buckle up because he's, you know, even more. And I try to like get stuff done, by the way. You know, knowing the astrology, I try to get ahead of the curve. But sometimes um, there's only so much you can do. You know, like I could say over the last week, I am running maybe a day or two or maybe even a week behind, up to a week behind on stuff because things are not popping as quick as I want them to, but it's that learning to be okay and maybe actually it works out to your benefit. And I've, you know, just again on a personal level been trying to calm myself down with the impatience because I think there's, uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of that collectively, people having an urge to urgency. <laughs> um, and why? What's the rush? You know, I try to do some self-talk and be like, you know, actually, this might actually work out for you that things are kind of going a little bit slower and then you don't feel like so under the gun and then you got longer 
deadlines, you know, because other people are taking longer. So then you can take longer. And that's actually a positive thing. So, right, we could put a positive spin on this. But, yeah, when you're wanting, you're waiting on someone, you're trying to figure something out, you know, maybe it's an opportunity um, and there's timing issues. It can be hard and it can bring up issues of impatience. I get it. I understand I'm there with you which is so, by the way, temperance card, which to me I associate with cancer. I know a lot of readers associate that with Sagittarius, but because of the card weighing out the water and it being a water sign, I personally associate the temperance card patience with cancer. And here we are, cancer season, having to be patient. Okay, something to me even more important than this lunar energy, right? Because this is this is a energy that's gonna, you know, be, flowing out over the next um, two weeks, okay? And then there's a larger cycle whenever, you know, we get to the full moon in Capricorn six months from now, there's that. But what's even bigger to me is that we've got this nodal shift happening on the 18th. And this is after a year and a half of the nodes being in Taurus and Scorpio, where I've been beating this drum, talking ad nauseum about values, your values, other people's values. And I mean, I kind of got like bored with it myself, if I could be honest with you. I'm like so glad that now we can switch switch it. We can, you know, change the record. And now the next year and a half is going to be about self versus others. <laughs> Fun times, right? Um, it's a big deal, though. It is a very big deal because um, this is about relationships. And so over the next year and a half, you could see, particularly if your Aries or Libra, oh my, um, a lot of relationships and even the relationship you have with yourself, uh, things being eclipsed in and eclipsed out to hopefully bring us into better alignment after the last year and a half of figuring out what's not in alignment with values. And by the way, just side note, the astro tarot readings that I did for all 12 signs for this new moon in Cancer, some people didn't get the memo over the last, like they didn't get the lesson. You know, big surprise, it happens to all of us, right? But I saw that in some of the readings that uh, there are people who are dealing with frustrations and insecurities because they are not getting the memo that the last year and a half was delivering about your values versus other people's values and making sure that you are actually in alignment with people who share values. Because I could see in the current readings that we still got some people like, why isn't this working? Well. It's not working because you don't actually share values. Like that's, you know, you're beating a dead horse, you know, for lack of better wording. Sorry for the idiom, but um, the gruesome idiom, right? But um, yeah, so I'm gonna say that I will talk more in those Astro Tarot readings about exactly how this nodal shift is going to impact your sign specifically your rising, right? Um, for brevity's sake, I don't say this in all of the readings. I think most of you know that you need to be watching your rising sign, right? So I'm an Aquarian, but I'm a Taurus rising. So I'm gonna go watch Taurus reading. I do watch Aquarius, you know, for my sun and I watch Pisces for my moon, right? The top three, your, your sun, moon, and rising, watch those. But what's probably gonna be the most accurate is your rising. But of course, nothing is as accurate as your a private reading, right? Because sometimes, like I'm a latter degree of Taurus, so sometimes actually the Taurus doesn't hit for me. It's the Gemini. You gotta, I know I think most of y'all don't need to be told this, but anyway, I digress. Let me get back onto this. <laughs> um, after we come out of this new moon in Cancer and this nodal shift the following day, um, the sun is going into Leo on the 22nd, which I think is lovely. Um, very vibrant energy. Um, happy birthday to the Leos. Yes, I'm going to do a what I love and hate about Leos. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so fun. I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, but more on, a, on a bigger collective note, I think that it's going to bring about this energy where we're looking at having more uh, fun in life. You know, I've been feeling like there's an increasing spotlight being put on that matter in my own life. It, and it came up in some of the readings, especially out of the Pisces reading. Oh yeah, go out, have fun, um, recapture your innocence. Um, and, and I've been doing that. I don't know if you've caught some of the videos that I put out. I take y'all with me on some of the things I'm doing, you know, like 
um, took myself out to have a glass of wine uh, one night and watched the sun go down. This is the simple things, the simple pleasures. You know, I've taken myself out for a little picnic at a scenic um, route. I don't know that I even shared that video with y'all. I will though. I will share more with you. I've been going swimming a lot. Been going to creeks, riverbeds, doing sunbathing. Um, when, you know, stopped on the side of the road, bought some Texas peaches. Um, I mean, look, get out there, do something. Leo season is the perfect time to do it. And it's so healing to just even get out in the sun and get your 15 minutes a day of direct sunlight, all natural vitamin D. It's going to help you fight off any depression. If you're like, well, I don't know about this good time stuff, stuff that ain't feeling too good right now. Hey, I feel you. I, you don't even want to know. <laughs> okay. But the sun will help you. It will definitely help you. Okay. And then on the 28th, we've got Mercury going into Virgo. So I think, you know, we're going to shift into more critical thinking as we shift into more inward focus about ourselves and these relationships. And then, you know, by the 1st of August next month, we are going to come full circle and have a full moon in Aquarius. So um, I'm going to talk more about that at the end, um, just to kind of give you a sneak peek into what's ahead with that full moon. So make sure that you watch to the end if you want to hear about that. Okay, with this new moon in Cancer, this is a really good time to set some goals, which I know we kind of talked about a little bit with the last uh, full moon in Capricorn. But still, um, a lot of energies, which we'll get into in a bit, um, are supporting goal setting. And the bonus this time is that it's coming with enhanced empathic abilities. This is very, very spiritual energy that we're coming into that is going to help you to set goals that are not just about ambitions, which I think maybe that full moon in Capricorn two weeks ago had us thinking about, but more towards setting goals that are actually in alignment with your emotional values that actually honor your feelings and what you feel you need in order to feel secure and stable in life and particularly in your inner world okay involving your home and private life that's what's getting triggered with this energy so um, these could be goals that have to do with support being given like good give and take with support um, goals that involve kickstarting uh, something maybe a project going on at home on the home front or something a project that in some way is going to improve your home life or your sense of belonging again triggering these more stabilizing secure feelings within yourself i do have to warn however that the challenge with this energy might involve remaining non-defensive during this time, particularly if you are coming into some kind of conflict or confrontation with others. And if that comes up, it's probably good advice to just try to stay aware of those feelings um, rather than do the Cancerian thing and scurry off sidestep, <laughs> you know, run from it. Um, this is actually a time to actually tune in and gain a more intimate knowledge of what these feelings are telling you. What are they communicating? You know, pain is, is a powerful communicator. It tells you about what's not working or what needs healed in your life. And so this new moon is giving all of us an opportunity to recognize uncomfortable feelings, sit with them and try to come into a higher understanding, a more intimate knowledge really of where these feelings are coming from um, what do they say about you, others, and your relationships? And how can you allow these feelings to positively evolve you? And when I was researching and thinking about this, this energy, um, something came to mind is the molting process um, that crabs go through. And a lot of uh, animals that have that exoskeleton, they don't just grow like we do, right? Um, they have to lose their outer shell to come into a bigger shell to accommodate the growth, right? So is there something that you're having to shed? Because what you became familiar with or comfortable with is actually impeding your growth and expansion. So you're going to have to slough it off 
as protective and safe as that shell might make you feel, um, it's getting in the way of you actually going in the direction that you need to go. So like maybe breaking out of comfort zones, basically. Let's talk about some themes that I keep seeing in these readings. And um, I wanna start off with, you know, let's go back about a month ago when we had that new moon in Gemini. Um, the cards around that time that were showing up, we, you know, I was getting some towers. I think I only got one tower this time. Um, yeah. Uh, it was not very common, but about a month ago, that was coming up a lot, revealing that things are not sustainable, there are integrity issues, and then I saw things evolving um, about two weeks ago when we have the full moon in Capricorn, the cards seem to be revealing that people were getting frustrated because they're like, what, why is this not giving me the payoff, you know, why is this thing not taking off, um, people even, maybe not even putting the work into it anymore because they feel like it's no use. Um, people feeling blocked and so honestly to me that transition was highlighting this kind of this reality check of spirit is trying to show you you know that something's not sustainable or it's not going to work um, and people were still trying to maybe make it work or they've had given up on making it work um, but still hadn't processed entirely um, now what you know where do we go from here and that was maybe for a divine time and reason, right? Because the full moon is about releasing what's not working. And so as we get into the full moon in Cancer, we are finally at a place now. We're like, okay, now what? Now that we got the memo about what isn't working and what needs to be released, and hopefully you did that work, now, you know, what do we focus on? And I'm going to say that I noticed a couple things that, that kept coming up in the readings of, um, well, I can't really say that there were a whole lot of consistent themes um, because honestly, it's there was a lot of variety and variation in the readings. I almost got energetically and all over the board. Um, it was all over the place type of, of energy and maybe even a little bit scattered as well where I think that people are feeling a lot of different things. It's obviously unique to all kinds of people could I like wrap it up in a nice neat package and say a theme of mm, the only nice neat little package I can put it in right now is that I do sense that there's a lot of confusion about what to assert oneself into and what not to when to hold back and when to take action and this issue of masculine and feminine energies kept coming up a lot like at what point do i take this kind of passive feminine receptive allowing flowing role in my life versus at what point do i alpha up step into my own authority and i mean look with the north node going into aries we're all having to step into some kind of masculine energy authority okay we're all having to um kind of tap into that yang energy but for a couple of signs like namely aquarius and um, taurus we're told to to step into more yin energy and, and i don't think it's a necessarily one size fits all it's a discernment issue of at what point do you step into the yang energy of initiator um versus the um yin energy of um, receiver okay and I do feel that right now a lot of people are not clear on it. And another thing that came up is incompatible values and a lot of frustration and insecurity coming out of it. Because I think that some people, again, like what I said earlier, is that, you know, the last year and a half should have shown all of us um, where the misalignments are, you know. And I think that some people are still maybe not there. They didn't get the memo. They didn't, they weren't able to integrate the lesson or, or they're maybe like me and they're like, well, shit, where do, who shares values with me? Where do I go from here? You know? And so, um, because of that, there is a lot of frustration and insecurity of, okay, well, so what does work and who does share values with me? And I think that we are collectively having to realize that some of our, our insecurities are coming from a place of just misaligned values and if we could just straighten that thing out which i think what was the point of the last year and a half of the uh, north node in taurus and the south node in scorpio i mean if we could just like get rightly aligned 
I think that life would not feel so insecure and frustrating and yet we're having to figure this out and hopefully over the next year and a half north node in Aries and south node in Libra um, we are letting go of these misaligned relationships and we are asserting ourselves more in our rightful individual path and in doing so as more people step into their authenticity and their autonomy uh, we begin to recognize oh that person's in alignment with me because they're doing the same thing that I'm doing and that person's in alignment and then you start joining forces and it flows and there's security because you actually share values so um, that's what I'm hoping the next year and a half looks like. But overall, you know, we're looking at these last two lunar cycles uh, being about cardinal energy. So uh, with the last full moon in Capricorn, a cardinal sign, um, the action that was being taken was on releasing, letting go. And now with this in the cardinal sign of Cancer and it being a new moon, it's about a new beginning and taking action to get that new beginning. So... And then, yeah, the new beginning is towards meeting our innermost needs, whereas two weeks ago, hopefully, we released whatever stood in the way of that. By the way, the cardinal signs are going to be most impacted yet again by this energy, which is Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And just as a side note, in case you haven't noticed, I'm just starting to release you know, whatever signs are mostly impacted by the lunar energy, I will usually release those signs first out of the 12. So you're going to see Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn hit first on my release schedule. Okay, so let's talk about aspects, transits um, related to this new moon in Cancer. Pluto is opposing this lunation in Capricorn at 29 degrees. So you know, for me, this is um, the way I'm seeing it in my life right now. The way I'm seeing it unfolding is um, with some challenges in terms of how am I going to nurture new beginnings within the confines of the rules, the system, the status quo, um, the restrictions, basically the way it's done, the way it's always been done, the way they want it done, what they expect for me to do, you know, that kind of stuff. And realizing that you know what I want to do is not exactly the conventional route or method so I'm having to find creative solutions within the system of the way things are done and that is taking some sensitivity and calculated effort so if you find yourself in this kind of precarious situation yourself where it's like yeah that's what I want but again and that's what I value, but wait a minute, I don't see anybody who's actually aligning with these values. How do I get this need met? And nobody is around here to help me meet this need. But wait, there's this group over here that's sort of aligned, but not quite. I mean, like, how do I do this? Um, you know, without getting these people defensive or, um, you know, just bypassing them all together and getting no meet needs met, right? Um, like just for for example, some of you might again have like health problems with um, Mars and Virgo right now, um, and you're trying to get some health issues addressed, but going the conventional route is not quite the way you want to go. Maybe you're starting to think I'd like to do alternative medicine, but oh wait a minute, your insurance doesn't cover that, or you know whatever whatever your resources are don't cover an alternative route but what you do have access to are resources insurance whatever for the conventional and so how do you do you just not do you get any health care or do you try to partner with these conventional people and say hey do you have some feedback do you have some advice on how i can take an alternative approach um and then you come up with creative solutions together without offending them, right? Because <laughs> I think that would that was that's the delicate thing here is I mean, how do we broach this conversation without me making you feel like I don't want what you have to offer, you know? Um, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of just an example of you know how um, you may during this time be looking at getting your needs met in in a in a in a precarious situation okay or trying to find alignment in some way uh, with people who are maybe not quite aligned just yet with you um and i don't think that this is a terribly difficult energy by the way um with pluto opposing this 
um, this moon. However, um, it is uncomfortable. I think it's emotionally uncomfortable if you ask me. And it does give off a bit of a walking on eggshells vibe. Um, and maybe even again, Pluto there bringing up some kind of sense of pressure and urgency to change and to do something um, or to take care of something, uh, to tie up loose ends and something, so maybe unfinished business. Um, and for some people, you know, obviously natal charts are different. So for some people, there will actually be some urgent need to take care of something. Um, God forbid, a, in a crisis or, you know, a sense of, of being in a crisis where you feel really pressured um, to make some changes. I think for the most part, people are not. But yeah, I think this pressure is being applied to very Cancerian themes like mothering, children, uh, feminine energies, having to do with home, family, again, you know, sense of belonging, nurturing issues, nourishing issues. And Pluto is over there pushing us to evolve, whether it feels good or not. It probably is not going to feel good. Generally speaking, for some people, it's going to be very intensely uncomfortable. I'll, I'll just say it like that. Okay. And yes, for some people in extreme situations, this might involve cutting ties within families, releasing um, any kind of toxic dynamics going on within families, or maybe on a more internal level, um, releasing childhood programming, surrounding issues of security, safety, um, maybe even emotional material security issues, um, neglect issues as well. And so however much pressure is applied to you during this time individually, just try to be aware as much as possible of making, you know, fear-based decisions because that's not really ever good, right? We should know huge lesson to humanity, 2020, 2021, a lot of people were manipulated by fear. Fear is so powerful. A lot of people were manipulated by fear to make decisions they now regret. So please remain cognizant of fears. Like feel them, be aware of them, have an intimate knowledge. Where is it coming from? But is it ultimately serving you to let it like run your decision making process at all times? Probably not. I mean, there is a healthy dose of fear, I think, to protect us from real danger. But, um, yeah, we don't want to go off into an extreme like was seen in 2020, 2021. Um, and also decisions that are made based on, I just want to stay in my comfort zone. Um, and, and, and is that comfort zone impeding your development and your growth? as an individual, uh, that's something to really keep in mind. And again, it's not that you hide, suppress, or deny your comfort zones. It's not that you don't even indulge yourself in your comfort zone for a time. Shoot, I've been doing a lot more of that. Um, but it's just that you don't let it hijack your decision-making process and cause you to make decisions that actually are not for your ultimate good over the long term. Um, I think if you try to take on the role of observer, objective observer in your life during this time, as much as it is humanly possible, right? We all get caught up in our issues. Um, you know, I just think that could help. Um, observing also uh, the obstacles and the resistance that you are experiencing or sensing in your life um, that is maybe standing in the way of you getting a new start. I've even caught myself with the self-talk, um, you know, having to observe that self-talk, the limiting beliefs and all of that, and catch myself in those moments when I say I can't, and switching it to a how can I. And I think this is also really helpful in our relationships with people when you're trying to negotiate, right? Let's say these very delicate, precarious situations where what you want is not entirely what they can give you, right? How to, you know, rather than get into this really um, defensive tone or, um, you know, this crabby kind of energy, right? Um, we get into this more of a empathic flow of, well, how can I? How can we help each other? How can we work together? I mean, I have this need and I know you do this over here and I'm kind of looking for that. Do you know of a way that we could work together? Or do you know of somebody who could maybe help with this? 
And then you come out of the arrangement, maybe, um, you know, happily surprised because you, um, you make them feel like, hey, they actually do know something that is helping you or they can actually help you in some way, even though it's not the way they conventionally or traditionally do things. This new moon is also trining Neptune and Pisces, which is retrograde. So um, look at wherever Neptune is showing up in your chart because it's showing you or maybe at this time you could get some kind of relief if you are feeling a lot of pressure from that Pluto opposition that I mentioned earlier. Um, if you are getting some pushback, right, some resistance, um, you know, look at what house Neptune is showing up in because that might be an area of relief for you. Just a word of caution, though, that that can get into a dark zone of escapism, illusions, deception. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, but it might also help us to connect with a bigger picture and that's particularly having to do with ancestral healing, generational wounds, um, particularly with all of this energy having to do with home and family at this time. When you look at Neptune, this is looking into, and in Pisces, you're looking at the past. You're looking at 5D, very spiritual. People that have crossed over to the other side. And it does give a lot of intuitive insight in addition to the empathic um, enhancement that we've already getting, we're already getting that from the you know new moon in Cancer. So, a super spiritual energy that could possibly give insight into how to heal a family issue, maybe involving generational wounding. I mean, I'm talking stuff that's been going on for a long, long time. Um, by the way, I'm personally getting a lot of divine downloads um, that I'm hoping to share with you about this issue um, in the upcoming special that I'm wanting to work on, which is the War on Families. Um, I would have put it out by now, but I have not felt a release from spirit because I keep, I'm still processing so much. I'm still researching and there's so much for me to share that I'm actually having to like edit it down. Like, how can I be concise here and get to the point? Because there's so many downloads I've been getting on this. And frankly, to tell you the truth, that, that right there was the driving force behind me doing the war on women and the war on men. Because I really wanted to dive into this one first, but I felt like Spirit was like, oh, no, 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 we got to unwind this. <laughs> we got to unwind this. And so anyway, if you want to make sure that you um, are notified whenever I release the War on Families um, and I share those divine downloads with you, make sure that you are subscribed, that you've activated the bell for notifications. Um, but yeah, back to the energy in you. I think that this Neptunian energy is probably where you're going to find some kind of inspiration um, to begin again in some way um, with these very Cancerian energies. And yeah, maybe find support for the goals that are going to put you in a place of feeling the security, feeling the stability, um, getting the support, getting the um, sense of belonging that many of us are lacking in our lives and we're trying to find, we're trying to create. Now, during this time, Mars and Saturn are coming into an opposition. And so this is increasing feelings of frustration, restraint, restriction, and I'm going to tell you, I got this in my natal chart, so uh, not a picnic. It's, you know, I've been dealing with this energy my entire life. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it can bring about these issues of, of moving forward versus staying put, which is, again, I'm going to go back to, you know, the confusion with people about when to step into this masculine assertive initiative energy, yang energy versus the yin energy the feminine receptive allowing flowing energy um i just feel that this layer of saturn opposing uh, mars is just it's adding another energy there of well do i you know do i alpha up or um you know do i take a time out you know more relatably for me in my life this energy has shown up in terms of having to assert myself very cautiously and conservatively. Um, lots of stop and go energy. You know, as soon as you get forward on something, then you get up, you know, it, it's, it's almost like Saturn is there saying, yeah, well, don't get too full of yourself here. <laughs> you know, 
okay, you just did that. Was that the right move? Because if you didn't, I'm going to give you karma. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's instant karma. Okay. By the way, somebody got instant karma that came up in one of the readings. I forget who, but, um, you know, this is careful with you asserting yourself. Yeah. I could go into a whole rant about how much of a bitch this energy is. <laughs> Believe me, we don't have enough time here for us to go into this. Okay. Um, for me to fully explain how much I don't like this energy, um, but, and I will spare you. And the good news is that it is passing, okay? It is not, <laughs> this is in my natal chart, so I should be a pro at walking this off, but I'm just saying. Um, thankfully for the collective, um, you don't have to live with this your whole life. This is going to be passing, so don't get too worried about it. Just be aware if there's frustration, if there's pushback in terms of how you're asserting yourself, it's because you really have to be cautious and conservative. You're going to have to be very calculated. Okay, let's do a little bit of talking about how this is impacting the United States natal chart. Let me say real quick, I tried to put out a video on political astro tarot on the 4th of July. July. I hope you had a good one. Um, there was some problem with the upload, the sound quality, the reach. It was something was off with the tech. I don't know, I just let it go. I, I, I counted it a loss, a casualty. I took the L. Moving on, right? Um, but if you want more of that content, um, give me a like, give me a comment, say something. and Because I would like to actually um, do more in depth on that. Uh, last year, I did like a six month report. And so I probably will put it at the end of this video um, so that you can click on through if you want to see that. And I titled it Welcome to the Revolution, and it was for the last six months of 2022. However, there are a lot of transits that were talked about in that video that are still relevant. And actually, I went back on the 4th of July, and I watched that old video, and I'm like, holy crap. I didn't know how real some of that stuff was that I was saying. And I'm like, oh. So I'm telling you, it's still relevant. Okay, if you want to go back and watch it, I will have the video at the end of this one. Um, and if you want an update for 2023, you know, the, the second half of this year and maybe even into next year, we'll see. But basically a more updated version of it, let me know, give me a like, give me a comment, something, give me some feedback because if there's, if there's not an audience, if there's no support, if you don't value it, I'm not going to add value there, right? <laughs> oh yes, lessons learned from, you know, the nodes in Taurus and Scorpio. All right, anyway. All right, so getting on to this natal chart, this U.S. natal chart. We do have this new moon hitting the United States 8th house, which is so scorpionic. Um, wow, I'm just realizing how spiritual that is as well, but it's more tapping into the underworld. My gosh. Um, and triggering thoughts about how resources are shared because with 8th house, we are talking about taxes taxation we're talking about shared resources with the government you know we're talking about a lot of secrets and hidden stuff okay um and again i think that what's happening is that people are seeing an illumination of 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 matters concerning again security and stability and, and safety for all for all americans and this is through hidden secrets that are coming to light involving the government, involving, I would even say, addictions with this energy. Um, anyone for a little cocaine down at the White House? Yeah, I just don't know who might have left cocaine over there, right? Did y'all see about that? Um, it, it, this is involving a lot of money, whatever this is, okay? And potentially contracts are in some way involved um, and, and media, social media. Um, legacy media, okay, because we've got part of fortune and Mercury conjunct this full moon. So there's a lot of money on the table and there's a lot about communications and information and knowledge and contracts uh, coming out. And at the same time, we have beliefs on women's issues getting triggered with Venus and Leo in the ninth house. And that is, you know, also... Um, I think hitting more of a global scale because we're seeing a lot of this wokeism reaching, I would say, any kind of Western population, right? In the UK, Europe, 
and United States. Now there's also during this time um, an opposition of the natal moon and Pallas and Aquarius at, at, in the third house. Okay, so again, the themes of media are coming up media communications, messaging, and it's bringing out this dichotomy of facts versus beliefs. Um, for example, is it okay for trans women to go into women's bathrooms? Well, we've got this newfangled modern day belief that it's suddenly okay. It's never been okay, but it suddenly is now because we're modern, um, sophisticated, progressive, educated people. We can all handle this. Like, what's the big deal? No, actually, now we're getting a lot of headlines in the news for anybody who's paying attention that this is not okay because now we're seeing an increase of women being raped and attacked, brutally beaten in these restrooms that are being shared with transgendered biological males. I talked about that in the war on women and the war on men, okay? And if you want to see the headlines there, they're over there on those videos. For brevity's sake, I'm not gonna patch them in, I'm not gonna edit them in on here because I wanna kinda get it moving <laughs> and get on to more stuff, right? Um, also to keep in mind that uh, we have Neptune and Pisces retrograde in the United States fourth house. Fourth house being very Cancerian, very much about we're talking to get a more feminine energy coming up. And so I think that really um, with Neptune retrograde and Pisces and this placement, people are reassessing misinformation and fake news when maybe they didn't before. They're looking at propaganda going on in the homeland concerning anything related to housing, cost of living crisis, and the war on families. And mind you, this whole time, even into last year, we have had and we still have United States Pluto return happening in the second house having to do with values, self-worth issues, income, you know, how the, how the country generates independent resources, revenue, okay? And this Pluto return energy in the second house is sextiling Neptune and Pisces retrograde in the fourth house. So, that is pushing us Americans to let go of the lies, in my opinion, uh, more readily. <laughs> and I think it is helping to enable, if not facilitate, a perspective shift on what we believe. Now also at the same time, we continue to have Chiron and Aries retrograde. Well, I should say return. We continue to have Chiron and Aries um, returning in the United States natal chart, okay? But now it's retrograde. In the fourth house, again, very Cancerian vibe where we are revisiting matters of bodily autonomy post 2020 and seeing where that took us, right? This trust the authorities, don't believe your lying eyes. Um, that's misinformation. Oh, because we told you so. Uh, don't do your own research because you're a dummy. We know better than you. Yeah, well, we know where that went, right? Um, <laughs> And most definitely now, it's it's hitting this issue of um, reevaluating, you know, gender reassignment surgery. And that's become a hot topic definitely over the last month or so of Pride a Month, um, where people are starting to talk more and look into this. I mean, I have seen some images that I can't even share with y'all on here because I know these people will take me down. They can be shared over on Twitter. You can see them on Twitter. Some of you don't even want to see them, okay? You'll, you'll lose your lunch if I show you these pictures of what is being done to these children or even adults who are undergoing the gender reassignment surgery. And so it's just grotesque. It's barbaric. It's horrific, okay? Um, if you don't believe me, then yes, go look it up, okay? Um, some of you, you're good. You can take my word for it. You do not want to see this stuff, okay? And I can't share it on here, and I won't. But anyway, we are looking at this issue of bodily autonomy. And we are revisiting also matters of right to self-defense. You know they're trying to disarm us. Which, by the way, is what makes the United States unique. We have the Second Amendment. We have the right to self-defense which protects our right to freedom, free speech. 
It's the teeth that keeps the authorities in check so that they cannot censor us. Which, by the way, they're working on that too. I don't know if y'all heard, but Biden's going through the court system trying to censor Americans. Hello, what's going on to our First Amendment? The only thing that is keeping First Amendment intact, other than the courts trying to protect it, which is what they should be doing, is that Second Amendment. And you see they're trying to strip that of us as well. And you see where that goes. If you look at what's going on in France, you know, those people have been disarmed. They've been left defenseless against mass migrants who have no intention of assimilating. Actually, their intention is to subjugate the host nation. And that's not my, I can again, if I had time to edit all this stuff, I'd show you them saying this on video, okay? Going out in the streets, interviewing these people, and you can yeah but all day, but the facts are there to support what I'm saying. Sorry, Aquarius here, Aquarius and Mercury, facts, logic, all right? We gotta deal with this, okay? Dealing with the brutal truth of the matter. And so anyway, I think another thing that we're having to revisit is matters concerning national sovereignty and definitely that dovetails with the issue going on in France um, and it's happening frankly you know all over definitely like in Europe and it, these western countries particularly where you have historically seen a predominance of European descent um, ancestry okay um, we're seeing illegal invasions going on um, by design where these mass migrants are being used as taxpayer subsidized slave labor that's why it's being allowed because they want cheap labor okay and americans who are trying to confront this issue are being gaslight or gaslit by the authorities and called racist or xenophobic for disagreeing you have for example france i recently saw and i shared it on my twitter that these historic buildings, national treasures, their heritage getting burnt down. I mean, a huge, massive library with historical documents burned. Um, I saw a, a church dating back to the 1500s in France burned down beyond repair, okay? And what this is that we are witnessing is cultural genocide after arguably a couple years of biological okay so you know over the next year and a half of the nodes going into or being into aries okay north node aries south node libra um i think that we are going to see an evolution towards an increasing concern about sending our children off to fight and die in more needless bankers wars which is what they are you know we're going to see a more of an emphasis on protecting nurturing youth because a lot of by the way these migrants who are fleeing their homelands are doing so after being directly destabilized by these warmongers here in the united states and i gotta say if you really care about foreigners to the people who are fond of crying racism and xenophobic and all of that if you really care about these people then you will help them to restore their homelands their culture and you will help all cultures european descent or not you will help all cultures to protect and defend their national sovereignty and their cultural identity and diversity um, as we do the same for ours. With this energy opposing, you know, natal Saturn um, and Juno in Libra in the 10th house, we are really, I think as Americans, taking a very long, hard look at how we're being seen out in the world. And we are frankly being seen as clowns let's get real like again more brutal honesty here i mean we're being seen as, as though we're living in a clown world we can't even figure out which bathroom to use <laughs> um we're, 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 ar we're arguing about what a man and a woman is we're, we've got men trying to breastfeed babies oh sweet jesus don't get me started <laughs> <laughs> women who do breastfeeding call them chest feeders. I mean, it's looking like a zoo over here, okay? And 
It's also looking like we have no control over our public servants. It looks like we the people are serving the servants. Now that's ass backwards. But how do we get control of this? Because they keep sending more of our money to Ukraine without taking it to vote. We don't approve of it and they know it. That's why they're not taking it to vote because they know we'd never back this. Um, it's really against the clear, clearly expressed will of the Americans, okay? And as our government in the 10th house has allies, Libra, you know, um, bringing a lot of heavy karma to our sense of national security and our sovereignty and our cultural identity. Um, we also have Lilith and Leo um, barely in the ninth house. Okay, just barely. Like it's, it's, there's still a lot of eighth house vibe that going on there. Sextile, natal Mars in Gemini in the seventh house. So I'm going to tell you there's a very sexual tone to this energy. Yes, it's aggressive. It's bitchy. It's flamboyant. But there is a sexual tone to this where, um, well, on one hand, you do have more themes of people stepping into um, their authority. They're, they're, they're getting self-empowerment. So that's cool. But you have some people getting just really outright wild. All right. Really wild. This is an energy about nonconformity and even rebelling against social rules. And we're seeing this with the whole body positivity movement. I mean, every day I'm seeing some video about some morbidly obese woman talking about how great she looks in the two-piece and that she feels good. And I mean, I even saw a video of a morbidly obese woman in the hospital with the tubes in her nose eating fried chicken and bragging about how great it was. And it's like, what have we become? Again, at what point do you step in with more masculine energy and discipline yourself because actually discipline, although it might be uncomfortable and painful, helps you in the end. It benefits you and other people. Whereas if you just have no boundaries and you're wide open, right? Like back to the illegals, you let everybody in. You're just open to a fault. You're permissive to a fault or the bathrooms. Come on in. Oh, you're a pedophile. Go on. Come to the little girl's room. You know, like you got to learn where to draw the line. And I think that what I saw in the readings and I'm seeing in the astrology, we get, we have to figure out how to rightly divide stuff, but you have a lot of people trying to buck this and go buck wild on the rules and everything right down to the whole maps movement that I talked about in those last two specials I put out. So yes, a sexual tone to this. I think the positive focus of it is becoming the best versions of ourselves. No, you don't need to look like a supermodel. Okay. You don't need to starve yourself to death. That's not healthy. That's a whole nother extreme. But don't like eat yourself into a hospital bed, sweet Jesus, and then I post videos on TikTok bragging about it. Come on now. Um, the negative expression of this is, you know, prescribing that everyone needs a freak flag and then telling them how to fly it. Okay. And that's, I think, that what we have going on here. Um, where people are at a point now where they are encouraging self-trashing unhealthy behaviors towards themselves, um, and yes, even others, maps, um, or themselves with obesity, right, um, or the reassignment surgeries, okay, because why? They, they lack discernment that in the end this ultimately is destroying your health, um, Maybe for in, the, in the case of the gender reassignment surgery, it's destroying innocence before an age of, of full consent, okay, of really understanding what you're consenting to. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to talk more about this. You know, if you want me to get into political astrology, I'll go deeper. I'm going to cut it off there because God knows, Lord knows, I can go on and on and on and on about this. So we'll leave it at that for now on the political astrology. Um, but yes, hit the like and I, you know hit the like button if you want to hear more. Okay, so let's take a sneak peek into the next lunation coming up on the 1st of August, which is in Aquarius, full moon. So there's something that is coming to an ending, a culmination um, with all things Aquarius, all right? Um, if you're Aquarian, it, like I am, then it might be something about yourself. Okay, you got to see where it shows up in the house. We'll be talking about it when that comes on. But let me say that the month of August that's up ahead for us, very spiritual. Because we are going to have two full moons 
in Aquarius and Pisces, which is super, you know, it's, those are transpersonal signs, number one. They're both very intuitive, very empathic, very spiritual signs. So there could be issues of connection, belonging, and some of you may be disconnecting from certain people or things. Um, there might be some kind of disconnections going on during this time, but I do think that it's probably going to be spirit-led endings. Um, and it, this would be a time where we are looking um, just to start the month off with um, reassessing where we're at on some ideals, some hopes, some um, things that we aspired to maybe earlier this year, um, coming to a closure, okay? Think back, by the way, to uh, January 21st of this year when we had the new moon in Aquarius. That cycle is now ending. That cycle is closing out. So what were you idealizing at that time? What were you hoping? What goals uh, were you setting at that time? And how has that come together? You know, what were you dreaming about during that time? How did it turn out? Um, and in terms of friend groups and, you know, social connections and maybe even social media, how has that played into the last six months of things unfolding for you? And also how to head over heart decisions factor into this. Um, some of you doing what's logical, but did you follow your heart? Because the sun is going to be in Leo at the time of this full moon. And so this is definitely going to come up. This, this contrast again of, you know, honoring your heart, your feelings, and releasing, disconnecting from something um, that maybe m might be standing in the way of you making a more heart-based decision that the sun in Le Leo is going to be highlighting for you. And during this time, we're going to have Mars and Jupiter aspects to the sun and moon that are pushing us to get a lot more grounded. And so, I don't know, maybe with that new moon in Aquarius with some high in the sky stuff, and now you're having to get more grounded. Um, or it could simply be that you have accomplished those goals and dreams, but now it's really time to kind of ground it out, level it out, and start building from the ground up, um, stabilizing something here more in the 3D realm, Okay. It could be a fortunate energy for some people, right? But just stay humble, you know, because I think energetically, again, it's a carryover of this new moon and cancer energy where we are having to find patience despite urges of urgency, especially with the building retrogrades that we are increasingly coming into. And then again, with Saturn opposing Mercury at that time around the 1st of August, um, there will be some divine downloads that come in. Uh, again, I'd say really from the new moon in Cancer on the 17th into the month, well into the month of August, definitely with the full moon in, in Aquarius on the 1st. So many opportunities to be spirit led with whatever you're doing. Um, just be careful with whatever you think that you're hearing from God, you know, that you're not actually engaging in some kind of projection, that you're actually really hearing clearly. And there might be, in fact, some challenges to your way of thinking or difficult communications going on at around that time, but Spirit is absolutely going to be with all of us helping to guide us through this energy and remain patient and remain on point with our purpose and our path. So stay encouraged. And um, till next time, please know that I'm wishing you all the best. And if you want to watch more, if you've got the attention, then make sure you look at these videos I'm going to attach here. And until next time, y'all be blessed.